All right. Once again, I have with me Dr. Michael Savage to talk about the biggest stories in the news right now. Uh, Dr. Savage, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around everything going on. Are, are we just being overwhelmed with information and uh, tragedy on a daily basis so that we can't think straight? Well, if I could answer that question, I would be uh, God. I mean, why is this happening to America right now? Is it on purpose? Is it by chance? I believe the left is doing it on purpose to overwhelm the system. They know that by causing complete chaos, they can uh, reform society in their own image, which is exactly what they are doing. Obama said he wanted to break it all down to bring it, build it back up. Um, you know, I, I had dinner with a friend of mine the other day, Dr. Dinsho is a colonel in, in the military, retired, a medical guy. And he quoted Voltaire when he said, those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. And we were talking about Hitler. I said, wait, say that again, Tony. I don't understand it exactly. Those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Okay, Biden, the border is secure. There is no inflation. The greatest threat to America are white males. Uh, let's go down the list. Uh, <clears throat> men who think they are women are women. They should be celebrated. <laughs> These are the things that are upsetting us. Climate change will end the world. It was supposed to have happened yesterday. All police are violent and try to kill black people and minorities. These are the absurdities that could lead well, are leading to atrocities, meaning all these executions of police on the roads, they stop to help a, a driver and get killed. It's an epidemic right now. The attacks upon people in the New York subways, it's being conducted primarily by a particular class of people, if you want to put it that way. And where did they get in their head that they should do these things? Why are they free to uh, roam the subways and attack people? Because they're told that they're oppressed victims and everyone else is an oppressor who took something from them. And so they're committing atrocities. If this is not arrested, uh, Stephen, we know where this could lead. Yeah. BLM protests were mostly peaceful when we know they were almost burned cities to the ground. Masks stop COVID-19 when they know that the virus is too small. Uh, it's so small it goes through the pores of the mask. Yet people continue to wear masks in their own cars in liberal enclaves. I live in a liberal enclave. You see people driving alone in a car with a mask on, and you want to say, sir, you're going to die of carbon dioxide overload. Absurdities. So they're committing atrocities upon themselves. So you ask the question, which is it happening by chance? No, I don't believe so. I believe the left is running the show. And uh, we are reeling from the blows. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, here's an absurdity that you maybe saw. Uh, Tyson Foods, one of the most well-known brands in all of America. Everybody knows Tyson. It's a household brand. Oh, they yeah. say, listen, times have gotten uh, difficult. Uh, inflation has gotten out of control. Uh, we need to fire 1,200 small town American workers. It breaks our heart. We don't want to have to do this. But what, what else are we supposed to do? This is the difficulty of running a business in America. Then it leaks. It leaks that they are going to hire 52,000 illegal immigrants. Mm. And nobody nobody seems to care. The government goes, well, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Get rid of those horrible 1,200 Americans sucking up all of that money, trying to make a living, pay, their, pay for their families, raise children. Uh, bring in the illegals. We can get you 52,000 of them for the cost of 1,200 Americans. What, what's your thoughts on this? It's a statement that completes itself. It's called uh, greed, corporate greed. And uh, when you only look at the bottom line, not at the social aspects of your business as well, what you wind up with is cutting costs wherever and whenever you can. This is certainly not new to America. I mean, you, if you, you go back, let's say just to the 1880s when Chinese laborers were brought here to undercut Irish laborers to do manual labor. That's what they did. They brought in Chinese laborers 
who worked for next to nothing and fired Irish. It almost caused, it did cause race wars in San Francisco, for example, when Irish workers were fired from building uh, the, the uh, cable cars that we have here, laying down the tracks. They were doing the work. They were making a, a minimal wage. They were living on it. They had families. Well, they were fired to bring in Chinese who would work for next to nothing, cause race wars at that time. So, Stephen, you know, this has happened before. This is what government is supposed to not do to a society. A good government tries to avoid conflict between classes and races, not foment war between class, classes and races, right? So who is behind it? I would have to say it's the Uniparty. You can't just say it's Biden. You know the Republicans are equally culpable, I would guess, right? Or, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Tyson's deeply involved with both parties, right? Yeah, the the uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which used to be predominantly made up of Republican leaders, they are constantly looking for immigrant workers that can lower the cost of their big corporate, um, you know, members. So maybe they're behind this as well. You know, Stephen, years ago, I joked sarcastically on the radio that the day would come that if we keep thinking about the bottom line only, that the government would eventually outsource the military and the Defense Department and say, you know, the Chinese can run our Navy at a much more efficient rate than we can. They can pay less. The, uh, so the sailors are much more obedient. So we're firing all of the sailors in the U.S. Navy we're replacing them. We're giving the, it to the Chinese government to run our Navy because it's more efficient. They'll do it cheaper. I mean, you say absurd. That's reducto ad absurdum logic. But that's where we're going. So what can a government do in this uh, situation? It's the government who brought in the illegal aliens. It's the Biden administration who brought in the 52,000 along with the other uh, 9 million, uh, 580,000 or whatever, 10 million illegal aliens. Where are they all? Where are they all? Yeah, uh, they're they're everywhere. They're uh, they're in my children's school. I had my twelve year old daughter say to me, "You know, I, I've really been struggling with school lately." I said, "How come? Can you not go to the teacher?" And she said, "All my teachers are overwhelmed because of how many students there are that don't speak any English." Ah, uh, I said, so are, "All the money being spent on English as a second language, so the whole class has to slow down for the immigrants." Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. And, and, and it's not like one or two of them came in. It's dozens in every classroom. And so now she's like, I, I can't even get time with my teacher because they're spending so much time trying to communicate with someone who speaks Lebanese or Chinese Isn't or that's... or Spanish. OK, it's 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 hard to believe that this absurdity is permitted to go on without a revolution going on in America against it. Biden denies there's a border crisis because he's a pathological liar, as I said before. Uh, the Republicans are in lockstep, basically, with Biden, or it wouldn't be happening because they want cheap labor in the meatpacking plants, for example, Tyson Foods. And so it's a uniparty system that's only looking at the bottom line, uh, not at the middle or long-term effects of this massive influx that they have uh, basically dumped on the United States citizenry. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I don't know what to make of it all. It, 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 it reminds me so much of gaslighting. It's just, it's on a daily basis. Um, I, well, I want to talk- let me, can, I, okay. can I go back to something, you know, you talked about my, my book, which I have to mention, The Savage Republic. There's a chapter in it called The Civil War is Here. The leftist insurgency, it almost- feels as though they want a civil war in order to declare martial law before the election. You know, it's like an, it's an insurrection unto itself. You talk about insurrection on January 6th that they're blaming Trump for. If this is not an insurrection of flooding America with 10 million illegal aliens, I mean, I'd like to know what an insurrection looks like. Yeah, yeah. 12, 1,200 people have been arrested for the Capitol. Most of them are now a misdemeanor or nothing. Meanwhile, 10 million people can come into the country and we're all supposed to pretend like it's nothing, nothing. Well, we're, we, they give us the big lie. We're a nation of immigrants. That's one of the biggest lies. I'm the son of an immigrant. However, not all immigrants are equal, number one. Number two, uh, there was very deeply controlled immigration 
when my uh, ancestors came to America, which wasn't that many generations ago. And if you arrived at the border and you looked like you were ill, you were put in quarantine or sent back to the country you came from. Right now, we have an influx of diseased individuals, tuberculosis, dengue fever. Uh, I can name five to six diseases that were annihilated or uh, suppressed or eliminated in America, which have now resurged as a result of diseased immigrants. I mean, we all know that tuberculosis is endemic in Central America, and particularly amongst the very poor who are coming into this country. Their own countries are deporting them, encouraging them to come here because they have no skills, Stephen. Most of them are illiterate in their own language. They can speak it, but most of them can't even write their own languages. People don't know that. They're illiterate in their own native language. They are the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the barrel of their own society. So their own countries are saying, we can't take care of them. Let the morons in America take care of them. They want them. They'll give them welfare, free phones, free hotels. And if they want to work, and we give them, they'll give them a job. We don't have no, and no place for them. So look, my mantra for years was borders, language, and culture. I said a nation is defined by that, Stephen. It was a very true statement, and it's more true today to most people than, than it was at the time when I said it, when they said, what the hell is he talking about? There's not a nation on earth that can survive the, the destruction of its borders, meaning the elimination of its borders. The uh, polyglot languages, like you just said with your child in school, how in the world does that help a child learn anything when your child can't even understand the teacher? The teacher can't even teach your child. The teacher's busy teaching them English as a second language and culture. We're told our culture, A, doesn't exist. The left says, oh, we don't have a culture. And if it does exist, it's all bad and all racist, annihilating all of Western civilization, going back to the ancient Greeks. So, yes, it's to the thinking person, a very troubling time or troubling times that we are living in. It's not imagined. It's not hyperbolic to say so. And we don't seem to see any relief on the horizon, do we? No, we don't. Uh, speaking of no relief, uh, Attorney General Letitia James in New York runs on a ticket of, I will I will hurt Donald Trump financially before there's any, any you know, crime, any hint of a crime. She gets in, she goes after him. There's no, there's no jury, there's no real court case, just a Trump-hating judge who decides 350 million in fines, 100 million in interest. They change the law beforehand so that he has to put up all the money. Uh, this morning, breaking news, nobody is willing to give Donald Trump a, a bond unless he liquidates a billion dollars in real estate. What are your what are your thoughts on this Letitia James situation in New York? Well, what we'll have to do is see which one of her friends buys Trump's buildings, which are being going to be sold. Uh, it'll probably be George Soros and company who will move in and buy it, you know, penny on the dollar. So that's number one. But number two, Letitia James is a fascist from her toenails to her hair. What she has done to Trump is equivalent to what Stalin's henchman, the murderer, uh, Beria, B E R I A, did, who said, Show me the man and I will show you the crime. It's the reversal of our rule of law. But Nancy Pelosi, actually, when she was still reigning supreme in America, said the reverse, which is exactly show me the man and I'll show you the crime. She didn't know that we have a law, a constitution, which says the opposite, that we are innocent until proven guilty. So Letitia James is a fascist through her filthy heart. And how she gets away with this is because the media government complex is no different. Show me the man and I'll show you the crime, then I'll invent the crime, and then I'll destroy the man. We're sitting and watching naked Stalinism, to be very polite about it, emerge right in front of our eyes. Yeah, I, I mean, they... Until he's bankrupt or dead or jailed for life, I just I, I they are not going to stop. They hate this man so much that, that they'll do anything they can to ruin him. That means they'll ruin us as well. If they can do it to a man as powerful and as, uh, uh, let's say, popular 
as Donald Trump is, what's to stop them from doing it to you or I if they don't like what we're saying, which is what they did in the Soviet Union. First, they took down the, the leaders of the opposition. And then they went after individuals who spoke out against the government who were then all destroyed. Concentration camps, executions. You say it can't happen here? I'm not so sure it can't happen here, Stephen. Not when you have a monster like Letitia James or that other doll down in Georgia, uh, Fonnie Willis, doing what she did. Isn't it interesting that it's minorities that are being used by the radical left to do their bidding? How smart the George Soros mob really is that they use the untouchables in America to bring down their political opponents. Yeah, I did. I did notice that because at Harvard, they teach the hierarchy of power, right? Uh, a white male is the most dangerous uh, thing on planet Earth and the most oppressed is a black female. So what do they do? They go after Trump with all of the black females uh, that they can um, before anyone's even decided on merit. We're going to put a black female on the Supreme Court. Had nothing to do with meritocracy, wow. years of experience, uh, court cases, history, none of that. Nothing. Just zero. Are you a woman, which we can't define? And are you black, which we can see with our naked eye? Those two come together, boom. That That's who we're going to pick. Well, I don't mind if she was a black female, but she was stupid on top of it all. The one they put on the Supreme Court. She had no history of, of any, any jurisprudence that would be noteworthy. She never published a, a finding that anyone will ever remember. So they picked a dummy, in other words, to put on the court to act on their behest. It's that simple. It has nothing to do with race. It has to do with intellect. She has none. So Letitia James has, has tremendous intellect of hatred. Her IQ and hatred is probably off the charts. She has one, one animus in her, which is to hate white males. And her biggest target was the most powerful white male in America, Donald Trump. So what do we do about it, Stephen? We're talking about it because we're still allowed to talk about it. You know, again, I, I have to keep coming back to a guy's book who wrote Inside the Plot to Destroy America. To me, this is the, the civil war that people say is coming. It's not coming. It's here. This is a civil war that's being fought basically without firing a shot. They're destroying the country from within. The enemy within is destroying the nation on a daily basis. And everyone I know who has a brain and knows history sees it as clear as I see you and you see me on this meeting. Yeah. Okay. I want, I want to go back to uh, Fannie Willis because th this has been so interesting to cover as a journalist. So you have uh, Judge Scott McAfee who donated to her, her election <laughs> who uh, failed to disclose this. He voted for her, failed oh, to disclose boy. that. Oh, my God. Then it comes out there that she's got this lover. She's broken up a marriage. She's got this lover. He's had two secret meetings with the White House. She's held secret meetings with the January 6th committee and also with the mayor of Atlanta, as well as Vice President Kamala Harris. Oh. They all decide, let's go after Donald Trump. And we'll we'll go at it through Georgia and and Fonnie Willis. She pays her lover double, double, even though he didn't have any experience. He then uses that money to take them on luxury vacations. And the judge is saying, you know what? As long as Nate Wade steps down, she can continue to persecute and prosecute Donald Trump. What what are your thoughts on that? You've said it all. You've said it all. There's nothing to be added to it. It's total corruption. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. I'm quoting uh, Lord Acton. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. So when you own the political system, as is owned in Atlanta, as is owned in New York City, as is owned in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, when you have mob rule, what you have is the rule of the mob. And that's what we are seeing, Stephen. This is mob rule by gangsters who are using not guns, but laptops to destroy their enemies. Yeah, the, the pen is mightier than the sword. Now it's the laptop. Now it's the media, right? They just have to kill you. They, they literally just have to uh, rape, rape you with the media 
and uh, they, they can get away with it. it it's well, it's, insane. it's the diversity con. It's the DEI con. It's uh, uh, all of this, quote, affirmative action. And then underneath it all is you have these people marching with signs, abolish colonialism, abolish capitalism, abolish imperialism. They don't even know what the words mean. Uh, however, if they were to actually look at Western civilization, it's what we are all standing upon isn't it? Without the advances of Western civilization, we will be living in trees and throwing spears at each other. Yeah. Okay. I want, I want to know, uh, <laughs> I have one more question that I want to know about which chapter of your book, a savage Republic, uh, shocked you the most as you researched it. But my, my, my question is it leaked this morning and this was reported on exclusively by the daily mail that Joe Biden behind the scenes is angry, angry, angry. He's angry at home. He's <laughs> angry in the West Wing. He's mm -hmm. angry in the White House. He is so mad that Donald Trump is beating him. He's saying, we don't have a plan to win. How are we going to win? Why do I look so bad? Why do the people hate me so much? Why can't they see all of the good that I have done mm -hmm. for them? I've literally given them everything and they don't appreciate me. My my uh, approval ratings, the lowest of any president in decades. What where do you think this anger is really coming from? Well, it's a combination of the reality settling in on on the fact that the people see through him. Number one and number two, he's uh, got dementia. That's clear to any second year medical student who can still see the read a textbook written uh, as near as 10 years ago. The man is suffering from Parkinsonian dementia. That's clear to anybody physically the gate number one the imbalance, number two, the special shoes he has to wear. Uh, it's not funny to look at. I'm an older person myself. I also had an elderly mother who wound up in assisted living. I watched people go downhill. This man has Parkinsonian dementia. And one of the, the symptoms of this dementia is anger and rage, lashing out at people. The man does not belong in the White House. He is incapable of fulfilling his duties as president and as commander in chief, no less. Uh, for God's sakes, the man could set off a nuclear war, which he has already almost done with the Ukraine insanity. Uh, so we don't know what could come tomorrow. He could cancel elections like his good friend Zelensky did. I mean, his good friend Zelensky, the, the, we're, we're fighting for democracy in Ukraine. Uh, Zelensky canceled elections, eliminated all opposition media, uh, closed down the uh, Orthodox Church because he opposes it. That's the democracy. Democracy was supporting was a billions of dollars in Ukraine. So you figure if he get away with that big lie in Ukraine, why not try it here? Why not cancel the elections and say Trump is too dangerous a man to even be on the ticket? And although we believe in democracy, we're going to uh, delay the elections for another six months to make sure that we have a viable candidate on the Republican side. What's to stop them from doing it? when they own Wolf Blitzer, when they own Jake Tapper, when they own ABC, CBS, NBC, and they own Fox, and they own all of the other uh, controlled opposition. Tell me what, you know, Stephen, what's to stop them? I don't know. I, I, I just- <laughs> We don't know. Thing. I think this is just going to steamroll the American people. Well, they demonize the citizenry, and now he- uh, doesn't understand that this is not an empire for him to rule like a Caesar. It's actually a republic. It's not a democracy, as anyone who studies this knows. This is a republic, not a democracy. They're distinctly different things. And he's trying to rule it as though it's an empire, and he's a Nero, meaning Biden thought he was Nero and had the worship of the people because his handlers all said, you are great. Oh, man, that was a great speech. You're wonderful. And now he wakes up and he sees the people themselves in the polls, even the internal polls, are saying, no, they're not buying your act, Joe. They're saying, Joe, they're not buying your act. You better go. And he doesn't want to step aside. Yeah, he won't step aside. His family should say, it's over. You know, no one wants to let go when they're older. But there comes a time, whether it's a family business, where the father has to relinquish control of the business to a son who's younger, smarter, wiser, and healthier than him. He doesn't want to do it. He'll hold on, but if he's a smart father and he has a family business that he wants 
to survive. He says, you know, for the sake of the business, the sake of the family, I'm going to pass the, the baton to my son. Biden should have passed the baton a couple of years ago when we saw him slipping. And I don't mean just slipping and falling uh, metaphorically. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It, it's sad to watch. It, it, it feels like elder abuse to me. I, I, I try not to laugh, but no, you can't. It, it's embarrassing that I mean, I read international news every day. You, I mean, I know you probably do, too. They just mock him every day. And then we have all this insulation from the mainstream media in America propping him up as if he's the best thing since sliced bread. It, it's very it's very odd to me. Um, I, I want to know, as you researched and put together your book, A Savage Republic, what what was the one area that maybe stood out to you the most or, or shocked you the most? You mean about the nation? Yes. Well, I think it's, it's common knowledge today uh, that there's no such thing as democratic socialism, for example, which was one of the big lies put forth by Bernie Sanders. People don't know Bernie Sanders is more or less running the Biden administration economically. You're an, you're an ec economics guy. People don't know Bernie Sanders didn't disappear. He's on the Senate Finance Committee, is he not? He's on yes. one of the most powerful committees in the country, the budget. So he sets the, 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 the budget, which controls how the country runs. And this is a liar, a filthy, degenerate bum, Bernie Sanders, who came up with a big lie called democratic socialism, saying, we're not, we're not social, we're democratic socialist. Well, the fact of the matter is, this is a communist through and through, a man who's never held a job, who is a multimillionaire himself, which is typical of all the, those in the Politburo. And he is a naked socialist. There's no such thing as democratic socialism. So, um, he plays Trotsky. And if you watch Bernie Sanders, you see he's a classic Trotskyite. People say he's a Marxist. They don't quite understand this. He's not a Marxist. This is communism 101. He's far worse than Karl Marx, Bernie Sanders. He's a Trotskyite. And I want people to study what that means. The Trotskyite Sanders has three homes. He calls himself a democratic socialist. No such thing. They are communism. And if you read the history of Soviet, the Soviet communist movement, you'll find out that they admitted themselves that there was no such thing as socialism. It was a step towards communism. They were all enemies of the people. Men died in Korea and Vietnam to stop communism, Stephen. And now we have Bernie Sanders, the naked Trotskyite, who, by the way, ran for the presidency right twice and recently engineered the worst budget in American history, a budget that was so laden with debt that we may never ever recover from the internal load. This could only happen in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And so you say, where do I see that? It's in the book. There's no such thing as people really have to understand. There are so many gems in here. Sure, it's my book and sure, I'm proud of it. But remember this, Bernie Sanders ran for the presidency but the party, the Democrat Party, did not want him to win. They liked him pushing the Overton window on communism. They like him behind the scenes pushing these things. The fact is that the words democratic socialism, which occasional cortex claims to be, and all of these DAs that uh, Soros is funded under the guise of democratic socialism, the party of Russia in J Russia and the Communist Party of Russia in 1917 had a social democrat wing prior to the violent revolution of 1917. I have to repeat that. The <clears throat> Communist Party of Russia in 1917, prior to that, they had a social democrat wing prior to the violent revolution of 1917. And it was only after the violent revolution, the Communist or Russian Revolution, that they claimed it to be now the Communist Party. They dropped the Democrat Socialism part of it. People should remember that Trotsky was originally a social Democrat after the revolution was successful. He was put in charge of the military wing of the Communist Party and oversaw the killing of millions of fellow Russians for being 
counter revolutionaries. I know this is maybe too much for the average listener, but this is the true nature of democratic socialism. It's the moderate sounding packaging for naked communism. And if you listen to the hateful mouths of the occasional cortexes and the so-called squad, they're all racists. Their hatred for white people literally falls off their lips on a daily basis. And then you have Joe Biden, who until very recently was actually mimicking their words. He stopped doing that about nine months ago when they said, hush, hush, we need the white male vote. Oh, we need the union vote. Or we need the white guy. We need the Irish. So stop bashing whites, Joe. Change your script. Now call it Trump is the, the biggest enemy. MAGA is the biggest enemy. Well, apparently there's 80 million MAGAs. What are they going to do, put us all in concentration camps? It's pretty dangerous times having such a senile, raging, insane de man, so filled with rage, and he's also somewhat senile in control of the military, in control of all of the secret police, in control of the media, directly or indirectly, and in control of the churches, by the way, directly or indirectly, with the government grants, things like Catholic charities, family, Lutheran family services. They're the ones behind the illegal immigrants coming in. They get billions of dollars from the government. So they're not going to say anything about the government. So, okay, it sounds bad and it sounds awful. And I made everyone really unhappy. And now they're really going to reach for their uh, uh, high blood pressure pills and their tranquilizers. But you ask me to tell you what I think. And that's the plot to destroy America right in front of our eyes. It's like a naked plot that's emerging for everyone to see, except those obsessed with sports, uh, let's say sports, pornography, uh, Hollywood, fashion. And how about the laugh tracks? I was thinking about this morning, Stephen. I turned on Fox News and, you know, one of the panel makes a remark and then they all laugh. And it reminded me of the phony laugh tracks that were introduced into shows in the 70s where they press the button and the director says, give me a loud laugh. And then a loud laugh comes up. Make it a moderate chuckle. <laughs> now make it loud. <laughs> now go for a mild laugh. <laughs> so you watch Gutfeld. It sounds like a laugh track. These panels are like laugh tracks on these shows. At a time like this, there should be no laughter allowed. Ban the laughter on these fake news shows, Stephen. There's nothing to laugh about. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a that's a really interesting point. Well, the reason I, I know that this stuff is hard, but uh, if we don't wake people up, they just they keep assuming everything's good, that the government is going to take care of them, uh, that they're not out to get them. That is not the case, folks. That is not the case with this administration. It's scary. Uh, I want to I want to put out uh, a direct link so that people can find your book, go to it right away and uh, look it up, get that information. Should I also point people towards michaelsavage.com? Is that the best place to to point some people? Yeah, they could go there. But my podcasts are twice a week where all podcasts are heard. And they are the they're the foundation of this entire show at this stage of my life. I went from radio into podcasting and I do some YouTube stuff on Michael Savage YouTube channel, which people enjoy. And uh, the main thing is the Michael Savage podcast, which, by the way, you'll be the first in the media to know. We rebranded it today back to its original name, which is the Savage Nation podcast. I decided that we may as well use the brand name people knew for 27 years, yes. which is the Savage Nation. Then I said, you know, maybe that's a little too harsh for the advertising world we better change it to the michael savage podcast and then i suddenly realized that's a long name to look up on a podcast especially the first word michael could be anything could be michael jackson so i said why don't you go back to the original name which is the savage nation podcast you're the first to know that we're rebranding it i should put it on twitter a little later today. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a, that is a brilliant move. Well, Dr. Michael Savage, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to put a direct link to your book down below, A Savage Republic, also michaelsavage.com. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I tip my hat to you, Stephen.